who worship um, from the HOP here at the Kingsborough Center. Um, we're just going to take a dive into our discussion tonight. Um, thank you for coming to be with us and connecting with us at this, um, on this episode. Now, the topic of tonight, which is Jesus the Good Shepherd, it suggests to us about the relationship, the care relationship that we have that exists between our Lord Jesus Christ and us as believers and, and Christians. So if I may just turn first to Pastor Lanry here on my right, um, how best can we describe this relationship that we're talking about between Jesus and us believers and Christians in the body of Christ? I think my own uh, opinion is, uh, or answer is to this question is uh, the expectation is for us to have absolute dependency on Jesus Christ, our good shepherd. Compare Jesus, the good shepherd, and the care of, um, of mothers, suffering child, is that of an absolute independency. Mm. So really and truly, it is a case for us to um, have absolute dependency on, on Jesus, on Jesus as, as our source. And, and hearing that phrase, having absolute dependency, um, reminds me of the relationship between a mother and a suckling child. Um, Pastor Toy, you are a mother, and um, of course, um, with an experience, um, for a threefold experience, I may, I may say, can you let us in into this um, relationship between a child and the mom, a suckling child and the, and the mom? Yeah, um, just like Pastor Larry said, it's um, a relationship of trust, of total dependency, where a, a child depends on their mom for everything um, they need, even from the womb. The child um, feeds from mom, depends on mom for all the nutrients it needs to develop mm. in the womb. And by the time the, the time the child comes out, that also continues. Mm. Um, the child would expect mom to know when they're hungry, when they need their napping to be changed, when they need uh, all their needs. They depend on child. And if you look at the scripture, um, in in the um, Psalm 23, um, Jesus, you know, called himself the, the Lord is my shepherd. So that's how this, that's, this, that Psalm, uh, the Psalm Start starts right, yeah. off. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. Hmm. You can see a total dependency there. Uh, somebody knowing that, you know, it, when I'm in need, the Lord my shepherd will show up. When I need comfort, the Lord my shepherd will show up. Mm. When I'm hungry, the Lord my shepherd will show up. Mm. And that's what that scripture talks about. It says, it makes me lie down in green pasture. And I know that is a declaration with an expectation of trust from someone, knowing that whatever I go through in life, the Lord my shepherd would be there. Man. You know, And that's a relationship between a mother and a child as well. The child is expecting the Lord, uh, the mother has a shepherd or his shepherd yes. to be there every time there is need. Mm, mm. Wow, wonderful. Uh, indeed, that explains um, the absolute dependency that a suckling child has for um, has on the mom. And then, of course, um, we'll come back and discuss further. But let me come back to Pastor Larry here. And what does it really mean for us as Christians to be totally dependent on God? To be totally dependent on God means to follow him. Mm. It means to make him number one, first thing in everything about your life, anything, everything you're about to do, you want to do. Is also to be committed to him and to be dedicated to him. Wow. When, when we talk about be, be totally committed to him, to make him number one number in this one. day and age, how can we tell somebody 
there on the street to make God number one. It, I mean, how can we emphasize that? Because the way you say it, you say it with an emphasis, is that really possible in this day and age? I think it's possible. It is very possible. Mm. But it's somehow difficult when you look at it from the, from the flesh. Mm. When you look at it from what you are seeing around you, it will be difficult. But you look at it as God, mm. that with God all things are possible. You will be able to depend on him. Amen. Amen. Fantastic. Yeah, I mean, um, I'm, I'm sure, I'm sure we, with the way you say it, it is quite obvious that it is something you practice yourself and you've seen results from it. I'm sure we'll come back and learn some more. Even though it's difficult, it is doable, like it's somebody several, will say. Several times. Yeah, that. that's fine. Now, um, if I go to Pastor Toy, when we talk about um, the, I mean, this relationship between a mother and a suckling child, is there one key factor that you can point to that can make that relationship to exist and to flourish? That, relation, that dependency relationship, that good, smooth relationship between a baby and her mother, what is that one, number one factor that could make that relationship flourish and blossom? I mean, trust. <laughs> the, the child needs to trust her mom, mm. just like we need to trust the Lord Jesus, our shepherd. Mm. Because it is the trust that the child has that convinces the child that the, the mom will always be there. Mm. The trust and the, the, because children know their mother so well that even when they hear their voice, even from a baby, yes. you know, from a baby, when if the mom is not in the room, the baby is with somebody else, and baby hears the voice of their mom, they will start to cry. Wow. It's because they can identify, mm. you know, the voice of their mom. And why would that child cry when you notice that there's some children that because of the bond they have with their mother, when another person tries to carry them, they cry. Why? Yeah. And, you know, but if their mom carries them, even if their mom throws them up, they smile. They're not scared that they would fall. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, yeah. they're not scared. They trust that mm -hmm. their mom will catch them. Whatever their mom puts them through, they trust their mom so well that this woman cares for me. Mm. So, um, so the relationship is based on trust first. And mm. then because um, the child knows that the mom has their back, the mom has their interest at heart, yes. so they're able to trust in their mother. Mm. Mm. And you know, there's a scripture in Isaiah 49, 15 that says, never can a mother forget a nursing child. Mm. Never. The Bible actually puts it that mm. right. Never with an exclamation mark. Never can a mother forget her nursing child. That is the bond between mm. the mother and mm. the child. Wow. So there's yeah. a bond that establishes the trust that we're talking about. This is fantastic. In fact, I recollect you mentioned the fact that even right from the womb, the baby have developed that bonding and that trust with the mother. Pastor Larry, if this is to be seen in the life of a Christian and God, how do we, what is that number one key factor when you talk about trust in the same way, how do we establish that trust? I think to establish that trust, number one is to trust his word. What the Bible says in the book of Luke 6, verse 47 to 48, it says something that anyone that does what he says is like someone that built his house on the his, his house on the rock foundation. Mm, mm. So that foundation you must trust his word. And number two, in Proverbs three verse six to five says, "Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding." Mm. Someone as a key factor 
you must don't, listen, don't lean on your own understanding. Mm. Let your own understanding be God. of God. It's also, it's also said that in 6 says, in all, in all thy ways, acknowledge him, he will direct your path. Mm. Always put you through. He said, that means you, you will hear a voice behind that say, this is the way. So when you trust, you follow the way. Mm. So, so um, if this, this subject of trust is so important, because if, we, if I look at it this way, um, many people don't, there's some people that don't trust anybody because they've been let down <laughs> on so many ways, so many instances, and trust seems to be what we're dealing with tonight. Uh, Jesus, our good shepherd, in fact, the Bible said, good shepherd, they call himself. So that means there is that establishment of that goodness, that trust, that bonding that is already in, ingrained in everyday relationship. I mean, I hope you are following us tonight and this is making sense to you. You will have seen on the screen and at the, on the bottom of the, of the screen over there that you, as you are listening to us, you can send us um, your comment, your question on the number that is um, shown on the screen there and be part of this discussion if there's anything at all that you might want to contribute in this discussion. I want to just ask about this before we go for a time to break. Pastor Toy, you talked about trust, and we're talking about a baby. How can a baby trust the mom? I mean, do, does a baby have the capacity to trust? Because if mother and just be looking at the mother Is that what brings the a, a mother spends a lot of time. So I love the way you said you, you see a baby looking at the face of their mother mm. for a long time. In that period, the, the baby is trying to know who that person is. Mm. So when a mother gives birth to, to the baby from the first day, the baby don't know. The baby just comes out and trying to figure out who gave birth to me. You know, <laughs> who? <laughs> who, who gave birth to me? And yes. the nurses help so much because they present the baby to the mom. Yes. And the first thing that happens is that the skin touches the skin. Mm. And then if the mother is a, if if the mother had decided to breastfeed, the next thing is that she now tends to breastfeed the child and tells, mm, "Who is this person?" Okay. So after a while, the child sees the mon mother does the same thing over and over and over mm. with them. Yes. Building that relationship. The next thing is that the child begins to recognize the voice of, of their mom. And that is how we need to recognize the voice of the shepherd. Amen. And the Bible talks about it that, the, the, that my sheep... Will, he hears me because they recognize my voice. Mm. So the baby will recognize the voice of their mom. And that's the beginning of that relationship. So she now, at the point where the baby now, the child now recognizes the voice of their mom, that point, relationship is established. Wow. And form, the trust is, you know, is strengthened mm. at that time. So, and it is the continuous care show of care that mom gives to baby mm. that makes the baby know that this person is the one I always, I mean, don't let us exclude dad because yes. there's, uh, there's some instances that, you know, <laughs> dad is also part of the, part of the equation. show, equation. Yes. And, yes. And, and the relationship between um, baby and, and dad is amazing. It's totally different from mom okay. because children still trust their father. But you see that some children... I mean, like our boys, once they hear, the, they know the voice of their dad. And that's why the dad needs to, you know, I remember when you know, my husband comes from work in the, in, the mo in, the, in the evening, the first thing he would do when he comes through the door is, hello. <laughs> you know? and, and the baby just recognized the voice of their dad from that point. Yeah. So the bonding, that relationship, that continuous spending time mm. with a child 
is what forms the trust. And this is the way we ought to spend time with our father, the shepherd. Mm. The more time we spend in his presence, the more we know him. Yes. And the more we're able to trust him. Wow, wow. Thank you so much, Pastor Toy. And um, the, you, you certainly nailed something that I was going to go to Pastor Larry to emphasize more. I mean, you emphasize on time, spending time. And you kept saying continuous time. Um, that means trust takes time to be established. And you also mentioned the Word of God, that the Word of God is what? Is that spending time in the Word of God to study that will establish that touch, skin to skin, um, the voice recognition that Pastor Tony was talking there about? There is spending time. That's why the Bible says in the book of Psalm 1, says meditate in mm. it day and night. Yes, yes. So there's a, there's a time you need to spend for the Word. Good. To understand it deeply and uh, to, to trust. Fantastic. Yes. So time is essential for trust to be established, and it must be the fact that as we do this, we're going to find a way to get God on our side and recognize the voice of God like the baby will recognize the voice of the mom or the dad as we have been told tonight. Well, let's go on a moment to just catch a break uh, at this time, and we'll be returning to continue on this very exciting discussion with my guests here in the studio. See you in a moment. Let's go and break. If you're like me, you probably haven't herded many sheep in your life. I also don't imagine you have spent a lot of time watching sheep. They're very unique animals, and there's a reason why sheep and shepherds are mentioned several times throughout the Bible both in the Old Testament and by Jesus in the New Testament. Because we're not as familiar with shepherding today, we can miss some of the important meaning in the Bible's teaching. While you and I are not familiar with the job of herding sheep, it would have been an occupation a lot of people in the first century would have understood well. That's where today's lesson takes us. So let's go herd some sheep. Sheep. They're dirty, smelly, pretty helpless, and sometimes can be a little hard-headed. Does that sound like some people you know? It's no wonder the Bible talks about us as sheep and compares Jesus to a shepherd calling him the good shepherd. We are his flock, and he is leading us and keeping us safe. Let's first talk about the shepherd. In John chapter 10, Jesus refers to himself as the good shepherd and talks about protecting his sheep. It was a common practice for the shepherd to sleep in the doorway of the sheep pen to make sure dangerous animals didn't try to sneak in to attack the sheep at night. We know that several people in the Bible are mentioned as being shepherds. Moses herded sheep for a while after leaving Egypt. That's what he was doing when he encountered God in the burning bush. David was also a shepherd when he was a boy, and the Bible talks about him fighting off lions and bears to protect his flock. Can you imagine fighting a hungry bear? Being a shepherd was a very thankless, dirty, hard job. You were in the hot sun with a bunch of smelly animals and no one was coming up to you wanting your autograph. When you look at Jesus, he was humble and he did the hard work of coming to earth, living a sinless life and dying on the cross for his sheep, you and me. That's our good shepherd, the best shepherd. Now let's talk about the sheep for a minute. What do they add to this relationship? Well, not much. They wander around needing to be fed and watered and sometimes they get lost. We read about a parable Jesus told to a crowd of people in Luke chapter 15. Jesus talked about a lost sheep and explained to the crowd listening, if you have 100 sheep and lose one, you would go after the one that was lost. However, Sheep are extremely loyal and love their shepherd and follow their shepherd and come when their shepherd calls. It's because they know their food, their safety comes from that shepherd 
and no one else. A shepherd may not be very important to many people, but to the sheep, there's no one more important. Do you put your trust in Jesus, our shepherd? Are you thankful for him? You know, we probably have many people who take care of us, parents, grandparents, teachers, and we depend on them. They provide for us and keep us safe. That's something to be thankful for. How much more should we be thankful for Jesus who shepherds our souls? Good sheep follow the good shepherd. If we have someone taking care of us, maybe our parents, but certainly Jesus, we have a lot to be thankful for. Welcome back. I hope you enjoyed watching that video clip, um, which gave us further insight into the wonderful relationship between um, uh, the shepherd and their flock or their herd of sheep, and also inform us of the relationship that could exist between a, a baby and their mom. Um, tonight, don't forget that you can send us a comment, a question um, on the quest on the on the on the number that is advertised on the base of your screen tonight, and we can know that you're there and you are part of this discussion. Please join us. Now, if if we go further on, um, Pastor Larry, in this in this um, from from the clip we just watched, on the part of the Good Shepherd, what makes the Good Shepherd? reliable as a carer to the sheep? I think what makes, him, what makes a good shepherd to be, reliable, to be reliable for the sheep, when you study Psalm 23, you understand what makes him to be reliable. Hmm. For example, verse 2 says, it makes me lie down in a green pasture, which means it finds a place of rest. Hmm. It finds a, pla a place of security, yeah. a place of comfort for the sheep. Mm. Verse 5 says, He anoint my head, my cup run it over. Which means a good shepherd gives more than what they need. Mm. It gives more than what they desire. It yeah. lavish them as a good shepherd. In verse 6 says, Goodness and mercy shall follow me. Which means goodness and mercy will be the one pursuing a sheep. Mm. But if you rely on a man, you will be the one running after goodness and mercy. So when you study Psalm 25, you understand what makes him what makes him a reliable carrier. What makes him a reliable carrier, a carer? Fantastic. I think I think that that is so that is so important for us to take note of as we go tonight. I mean, Pastor Larry just mentioned area of provision, um, protection, security, and ensuring that. Um, the, 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 the good shepherd look out for the goodness and the benefit of the, she of the sheep that is in the herd that um, is directed. Now, Pastor Toy, you touched on it earlier on yeah. um, when you were mentioning um, what makes a baby to, to actually enjoy the, 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 the care of the mother or the father, as the case may be. Are there specific things that you can mention? I, I mean, and that, that's very important for us to yeah. take note of here. I think the deep sense of love for a child mm. um, and commitment um, strengthens that relationship. Wow. Uh, um, another thing is, you know, putting the needs of your child before yours. Mm. 
And the child always knows that. You see a mom very hungry, about to eat, and hears her child start to cry. She forgets about the food immediately mm. and goes to care for that child first before she thinks about herself. And those are the things that, that, that strengthen that relationship between a mother and, and, uh, and her child. And um, in that story, we heard about how the shepherd, you know, protects the sheep. Yes. Sit at the gate so that wild animals will not come and eat up the sheep. Mm. And this is what a mom would do. A mom would stand for their child, protect their child, defend their ch child, and not allow any arm to come near them. Would we'll fight, you know, would... We'll, we'll, put their own life in danger for their child. These are the things a mom would do. Mm. Um, and um, this is what Jesus would do for us. Yeah. He is forever committed um, to, to protect us. He's forever committed to show us that love and that mercy, regardless of what we do. Mm. You see a mother or parent, it, their child will do something wrong, you know, they'll tell them off and quickly ask them, come. Um, they've just told the, told the child off and they'll say, come, take my iPad. What, why, are you, <laughs> <laughs> why are you giving them something when you've just told them off? And, yeah. that, and that is the love mm. of mm. You know, not wanting the child to feel too bad. Yes. And this is the love of Christ towards us. Amen. 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 Um, I, I, I remember um, one of the, one of the, I mean, most men, most men looks at a very young, brand new baby and look at them too fragile to handle. <laughs> and then you see the mom, you know, give them a wonderful bath, pamper them, look after them, change the, the nappies and all that. I, is that part of what, you know, the joy that maybe us need to, fathers, we all need to do some more? So we can also gain a little bit of more influence with our babies yeah. in that sense. Of course, I mean, we, in, the, in the clip that we just watched, um, the man was talking about smelly sheep and the shepherd will still, you know, not complain yeah, and be them. around and still wash them, make sure they, you know, catered for, yes. would not mind all the smell or, or, around him. Mm. He would still care. And that's, and that's the love of a mother as well, mm. where, you know, I've never seen a mom um, changing a child's nappy and, and throwing up because of the... <laughs> 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 that I can't change that nappy because I'm going to throw up. Yeah. You could feel like that's when you're changing somebody else's baby but yeah. not your baby not your baby you don't smell it when you're changing your baby's wow, nappy that is powerful you don't smell it but you could smell another child and say mm, i can you know i don't want to change that child you know but with your child you don't the, smell the it it's not smelling it's not smelling <laughs> <laughs> that's a nice one that's a nice one um isn't that the same pastor larry you know there are some very messy things that god helps us to clean up you know when we have gotten ourselves into so much mess and we have to come back to god he the good shepherd even though he tells us don't do that thing and then we ended up going to do it and then we'll still come back to him and say god you know like the children of israel have uh, done so badly and then he's here to um, clean it up for us up. I, 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 I remember the story of uh, like moses now when uh, the same god that parted the red sea that brought them out from the from egypt that brought out water from the for when they went as when they did something wrong, it chastised them. Mm. It sent happened to them, and that that happened began to bite them. And he asked Moses to build to construct to, to build a cross. That yes. if there's anyone that look at it, a bronze serpent, yeah, yes, a bronze serpent. So it chastised them, so that for them to come back mm. to him sometimes. Good. All right, yes, let's, let's um, make some progress tonight. And I want to look at the relationship. If it's going on smoothly, everything is okay. Is there anything that can threaten that relationship between 
these two people, personally on your side, between God and us believers, is there anything that can threaten that relationship? The only thing I think that can threaten, threaten the relationship is unless the sheep lost, even at the shepherd, even, even when the sheep lost, the shepherd will still go and look for him and bring him back. Mm, mm. That's why in Matthew 18, verse, verse 11, says, Jesus Christ said to the Son of Man, that Jesus of Man said to them, He said, The Son of Man come to save that which was lost. Mm. So the purpose of his coming is just to bring the, the lost sheep back. I remember the story of the prodigal son. Mm. That when he came back, his father was very happy. That, oh, look at my son. He was lost, but now he's been found. He's been found. So as long as we are on God's side, he will care for he will us. Care for and us. nothing can touch he, us. He will always, always look after, even, when, even though when we lost. Also, is there anything that can threaten the relationship between a mother and her suckling child, or a parent and her suckling child? Yeah. Um, even before the mother gives birth to her child, Pain can threaten that relationship. <laughs> okay. You know, labor time. But the Bible also talks about that and said, as soon as the child is born, she forgets. Oh. She forgets the pain. And she, she's filled with joy. Mm. And um, um, she starts to, you know, she forgets it and starts to love her child. So, um, yes, there's a lot of things that can threaten that relationship between mother. I mean, We've seen situations where mom has to give up her child because she she wasn't able to look after the child, mm. maybe because of financial circumstance or I don't know, different kind of situation. But it's, it's still done with a lot of pain. It, it, if the woman had a choice, she would not give up her child in adoption or dump her child by the street. In fact, a, a lot of mom would do that and would pray that somebody else found the child, really. Yes, yes. And that's still the love. And some of them would do that because they felt the child's life is in danger as long as the child is with them. Mm, mm. And maybe somebody else can look after that child. So a lot can happen, but that, that does not change the love of a mother to, a, to, to her child. Say, Nothing can we, change that. Yeah, as we're talking... The story of Moses came to mind when, exactly. you know, you know. I mean, yeah. of course, took to the baby because the life of the baby was threatened. Yes. Put the baby in a basket yes. and, and then was and watching and making sure that you know go to the right person. Yes. And she ended up looking yes. after. And that, and that is the love of a mother. It cannot. Yes. It cannot change. It cannot be erased. No matter. I mean, you see. I mean, the amazing thing I've seen in my life is, you know, when. Maybe a child had done something bad, like commit a murder, and mom knows, mm. and they're about to sentence their child. I've seen it vividly, and the pain of that mother, even mm. though she knows that what her child has done is wrong. It's wrong, is bad, yes. But she still cannot give up that child. Mm. She still cannot. Wow. Say, because, yeah, go and kill him, because <laughs> he's done something <laughs> bad. You know? Yes. So the, the love is, is strong. It can't be broken. The love God has for us, the love the mother has for the child is so strong, it cannot be broken. And that explains for us to establish that there is a joy that we have when we know that the relationship between us and God, the relationship between the sheep and the shepherd, the relationship between us as Christians and God is, is deeply established and rooted. What are this joy that we can benefit? I think the joy is not only for you alone, like what Bible says in the book of Psalm 103, verse 7 says, the mercy of God is from everlasting to everlasting upon them that fear him, yeah. and his righteousness is unto children, children. Amen. So the joy there is not only for you, even unto the, your children, children. Yeah. Another joy that I can see in our relationship and uh, with God is we have access to divine defense. Example is, is in the book of Eli uh, Second Kings 6, verse 16. Elisha said to, to, his, uh, to his servant, he said, they that are with us, they are more than they 
Yeah. So we have access to divine, divine defense. Another, another example, another, thing we, another joy that I think we can have is secret. We have access to divine secret. Mm. Divine secret, like uh, Abraham. God gave him divine information. So we have access to even Daniel too. When, uh, when the, the, the king ha ha had a dream and he's looking for the interpretation, but he has access to it because there's a relationship between both. Another, as another relationship, another uh, benefit, another joy that I can see is it makes us to, to, to know his way. Psalm oh. some, some, some 103 verse 7 says, it makes Moses to know his way. It shows his way to Moses. But it's act to the children of Israel. So when you have a relationship, to, you know the way of God. Even when things happen, it's the way of God that you will that will give you peace in your heart because it will show his way in, in every situation. Fantastic. Wonderful. Yes. I mean, I, I think I can recollect there um, about five, six benefits that um, Pastor Larry had highlighted to us that you stand to gain as you establish your relationship with the Good Shepherd in the way that you know that not only can you enjoy protection, you can enjoy divine secret. You can enjoy the counsel of God in every areas of your life and so many more as we have listened to. Pastor Toy, if we, if we look at this same, same question, the benefit and the joy that we have when a child is assumed and receive um, the, 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 this relationship. And let me just read from one, uh, Psalm 127. That famous psalm I love to read and I and I am I'm, I'm so always am glued to. It says, Children are the gift from God, they are reward from him. Now say children born to a young man are like arrows in a warrior's hand. How joyful is the man whose quiver is full of them. There's so much and so many joys we can we can recollect from this from this relationship. What are those joys that you can just mention a couple to us? I mean, um, one of the things. Well, first thing I would say is about the joy. Um, I don't know. So the joy of forgiveness that the child knows that they are forgiven when they stray off. Mm. You know. That's powerful for a child to know that even when they have done wrong, they can always come back um, to their father. Come back home. Come back home. Yes. A, a child needs to know that that door is there, that opportunity is there, mm. so that they they can um, they be free to talk to come back home when something goes wrong, yes. and they can also be free to. Tell to tell if they have done something wrong as well, you see, and that is the relationship we have with Christ that yes. we can go to the Father at all times because of the love that He has for us, and we can ask Him for that forgiveness. And it, it gives us joy that we have that kind of relationship with our with the Good Shepherd. Mm. We can go to Him when we are wrong and when we've done something wrong, and his, his, the door, His hands are always open to receive us back and to mm. cleanse us. And put us back in the right state and, and for us to carry on. Um, another joy that we have is the um, opportunity we have, um, the freedom that Jesus has given us through that relationship of being the good shepherd. Yes. So that we know that we are free from the bondage of the enemy. Mm. That he can no longer hold us down. We are free to, to be able to achieve the purpose of God for our lives. And we have the power to overcome everything that he throws at us as well. Yes. That understanding gives us joy. So that's the joy of salvation in a yes. nutshell. Yes. That's the joy of salvation, which it's a powerful thing that could happen to anybody. When you are saved, you feel that freedom, that wow, I have been set free. I have been redeemed mm. by the power, you know, of of Jesus. Yeah. He has redeemed him, redeemed me back. And and for me, um, the love of God is so powerful mm. 
that um, is so much love us and is faithful, you know, and nothing. So God cannot love you less at any time. He loves you the same way. You know, sometimes people can say they love you today and don't love you again tomorrow. Jesus is not like that. Mm. He loves. That's why um, we talked about he will go and look for the lost one. I don't know what he would do with the other nine, 99, <laughs> honestly. That always comes to my mind. That So when he's looking for the lost one, what's going to happen to the 99? He must have secured them. Of course, you know? definitely. <laughs> I I'm want sure. to believe so. I'm sure he would do yeah, that. But, yes. but that love that will make him go all out um, for you, we've got to understand that love is there. We should give us that everlasting joy in our hearts, um, the love of God, that he died for you and I. He gave up his own life for you and I yeah. um, so that we can have that eternal life and our name can be written in the book of life. Amen. You know, that's, that's just a powerful um, joy Good. to know. That, that's so nice and then so wonderful. <clears throat> I want to just end in this discussion. As I recount, as we were talking, I recount the, the story that um, I think we were together when somebody shared this story with us about... Um, that singing boy called Malachi, Malachi who, yeah. who, who ended up winning a singing um, competition. Um, but he was saying that, he was being asked, how did you get to be singing in the first place? He says, oh, my mom is a bully and she no. took me, something like that. Uh, yeah, yeah. He said the word, uh, no, no, um, she's bossy. Yeah, said my, 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 mom, mom, my mom was bossy. Was very bossy, uh, yeah, yeah. Very bossy and took me and dragged yeah. me to go and learn. So what I'm trying to explain is that sometimes there are some things that God asks us to do and our mom, parents ask us to do it's that we painful. don't like to do, yes. but there's a reward. There's mm -hmm. a joy. There's something, there's an outcome that mm -hmm. if only we can just follow when they ask us, we can get the joy. Is there a way you and can... That's, yeah, and that is where knowing the love of God comes in. Yes. That even in your pain, he still loves you. Mm, mm. Because a lot of times when we go through bad patches of life or the um, downturn of life, we tend to say, oh, Jesus doesn't love me anymore. I'm alone. I feel alone. I feel forsaken. But even in that, God loves you. And we've got to always remember that and understand mm. that love of God. Yes. That the love of God is not measured by whether we're doing well or not. It's yes. not measured by yes. whether we're doing right or wrong. Mm. It's just constant. The love of God is there. And, um, and that's Psalm 23 that um, we read earlier, that he's always there, even in the valley. Amen. He's there with you. Yes. And that, that understanding of the love of God would keep us going and even in the bad times, he's still there with us. And, and that help, that would help us to go through the storm of life in a, in a different way, not um, allowing it to put us down. Because, you know, so, for example, you, know, you would see young children when their parents are taking them to school in the morning sometimes. You see them, they want to walk on the fence, you know, on the lower fence. And their parents are allowing them to walk on the fence. They are thinking, ah, how can this woman allow this little child? But because the child knows that their mom is beside them or their dad, whoever is walking with them, yes. they, they're walking as if, you know, <laughs> nothing is going to happen because they know yeah. that if they fall, somebody is going to catch them. Yeah. And that's the kind of mentality or understanding we should have that... It can never forsake me. That's what he said in his Bible. Amen. So even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, he's he there is with there with me. me. Amen. He's Amen. right there with me. Amen. Even when I walk through fire, I will not be burned Amen. because he's right there with Amen. me. Amen. You know, Amen. holding my hands. Fantastic. Wow. It's been an exciting discussion tonight. Um... Thank you for that wonderful comment from one of our viewers. Um, um, Mr. Beckley, you can see, as he said, I can just read this to you. He said, you are renewed and refreshed because of the relationship and the love of God. How distinct that is. That aligns with what my, my guests here in the studio have said tonight. The love of God is so powerful. The love of God to us, his children, the love of the mother, the father, 
through their children is so powerful and it stands out. What I want to just end up tonight is to ensure and to align our thoughts to the fact that whatever we want to do, make sure we explore how to get the love of God to be established in our lives. And we can get this done. There is so much opportunity and so much deserving result that is open to us that we can benefit from. I hope you have been blessed tonight. Is there a closing remark from uh, my guest in the studio? Um, if you'd like to just say a closing remark or maybe a prayer um, one way or the other. I mean, Pastor Tony, let me ask you for a closing remark and then maybe Pastor Larry will pray for us as we will close tonight. Um, should, should we just do that? Okay. Um, closing remark for me is just to know that the Lord, our God as a shepherd, he cares for his sheep. He cares for us like a mother cares for a young one. He gathers us into his arm and he carries us close, very close to his heart. Mm. And he will never leave us nor forsake us. He will provide for us. He will comfort us. He will protect us. He will look out for us. And he will care for us as a child. So, yeah. So when next you feel um, you need that mother's love, even if you're a man, <laughs> grown up, remember you have the good shepherd who is there to show you that love. Amen. Amen. And he will never leave us not forsake us. Amen. Thank you so much. Yes, we're going to be praying, um, and I'm going to ask Pastor Larry to pray for us. But before we pray, can I just ask that we also take time to prepare an offering to give to God tonight. And um, for those of us who also would like to give a tithe, it's also something that you can do to give a tenth of your income to bless God and to connect yourself in the love that you have for God and for his kingdom's sake. You give unto him generously so that he can do what he has promised to do, not just for us, but for people around us and for people that belongs to this household of faith. If you'd like to just do that, the, the media team are going to, and they should be showing with you now, all the different ways that you can give and then throw into the account directly. We want you to please do that and we know that God will bless you as you do that in Jesus' mighty name. I'll just Amen. ask that Pastor Larry will come and then give us a closing prayer as we run to a close from tonight's discussion. Pastor Larry. Father Lord, we thank you for tonight. We thank you for your word. We thank you for this gathering. Our Lord, our maker, as we have shared your word tonight, O oh Lord, Lord, bless us, O oh Lord. Amen. Refill us, O oh Lord, in the name of Jesus. Amen. As the word, as the book that we are hearing, refresh and renew. Father, refresh us and renew us, O oh Lord, in the name of Jesus. Amen. Lord, fill our valley, O oh Lord, in the name of Jesus. Amen. Lord, as we are going tonight, Lord, go with us, O oh Lord. Yes. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much. Um, the media team are going to bring to you the exciting um, event that we have that is coming up ahead for us. Don't forget, especially our worship exciting Sundays that is coming on from this Sunday. Please take note of this announcement, and we hope to see you join us in our wonderful service here on Sunday and at other times. God bless you. <laughs>